And we are back in square one. I replaced the BIOS battery and now we're back into the old. Back into it not booting or BIOS reset or remove battery, make sure contacts are clean and... You know what really sucks? It, it, this was working perfectly. Everything was working perfectly and it may just need... So the thing about basements and attics and storage rooms is that there is always something interesting hiding in there. So we were at our friend's house and we were looking for some speakers in the basement and looky what I stumbled upon. It's his old desktop PC. Now he said this has a dead motherboard, but if you've been a long time fan of this channel, I I'll be the judge of that. Now I have already opened this up back in the house, so uh, I already got general idea what this thing has. So it's around the same era as my Dell Optiplex actually, but on the AMD side, specifically AMD's not so fancy, not so nice era. It's still in an era where people would have a lot of drive. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight hard drives can be fit into this thing. And Three optical drive bays. Normally, you don't want to use a vacuum cleaner on the computer, but I feel like there's a spider in here, so... So, like I said earlier, this thing is AM3. I don't know what CPU is underneath here, and clearly it's using the old stock cooler. It has two sticks of nice shiny blue RAM of I don't know what capacity. It's G-Skill graphics card. It's one of those um, Asus Direct CU2 coolers. Though I don't see any heat pipes. I don't think that's one of those. So this card is an Asus HD 7770. Two gigabyte. That's a mouthful. It's based on AMD's GCN 1.0 architecture, which for reference, my RX 570 uses GCN 4.0. It's actually roughly like a GT 1030. This is the older era of CX power supply. It is group regulated. It's maximum of 30 degrees Celsius. So it's actually quite concerning that it's actually pulling air from the inside. It's not exactly a bad, power supply it's just low end it's more on par with today's corsair vs gray labeled units and then for drives we got the dvd drive because that is so relevant today in 2020 he actually took the hard drive away because privacy reasons next is the case this is an nzxt source 210 damn this was a popular budget case back in the day it's got a rear 120 mil fan and a top, um, that is not okay. I'm gonna have to remove this fan. Now I'm gonna show you some tech support gore kind of stuff. Like the dust, that's nothing compared to not having motherboard standoffs. This is screwed straight into the case. There's no space behind here. On the top, it's also not using a step. Oh, I thought the top had standoffs. No, screwed straight to the back. Something is... Yeah, something... What is that? Mmm, dust. Oh no, that's way more dust. This is the heat sink back plate. That was supposed to be over there, screwed into the back. Well, that explains at least where this screw came from, what this screw's for. So I was doing a time lapse and for some reason the Pixel didn't record it. And um, this fell out. The, and um, yeah, these things are supposed to be here and they just fell out. Apparently, the heat sink was simply secured by thermal paste.
nice and clean and it's a really nice steak so it will, this, will, this can actually make a nice nas case and yes there's mesh underneath here so you can actually pull under from under underneath so you can have the fan pulling from the bottom so i've done the usual with dirty dusty computers do a complete disassembly get and just clean it just, just clean it all like this where i don't know if this thing is working i just want it clean first before i tackle it so let's get in shall we so motherboard wise okay we so we already don't know the motherboard but the cpu we never actually found out so for cpu we got the 6300 this is an fx 6300 so this cpu is a six <coughs> class action <coughs> allergy sorry this is a a new slightly unusual three core cpu this is the vrm heatsink it's actually quite hefty this is ddr3 1866 this is nice g and it's g skill too so yep that's our 7770 we need it since cpu doesn't have integrated graphics motherboard doesn't have integrated graphics so we need a dedicated graphics card power supply i have gave i gave it a deep clean and look at that no bus bunnies just clean insides nothing's wrong with it so now i'm just gonna have to put this thing back together spinning now to diagnose because we got fan spin holding the power button turns it on a dead motherboard would simply not post at all move insert j back one clear data well i have a feeling it just could just be dead Whoa, 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 we got... So here's what things I did. So I did the clear CMOS, but with, with, with the power supply on. And then RAM is in slot 2. The North Bridge is starting to warm up. And what I noticed, what I got excited is the fan went full speed. And I think right now it's in full speed. Press F1 to set up. Okay, come on. Look at that! Would you look at that? Okay, look at that. We got Linux distro. Uh, let's get Mint. That's just on my... This one is currently plugged into my Optiplex. We got sound. We got sound, we got operating system. Yeah, that CPU fan's loud. So I think it's overheating or it's like, oh no, VRM temperature is freakishly hot because there's no thermal pads.
like I gotta get Windows. I tried to get it, get the stuff I needed in Linux. Problem is I'm just so used to Windows. What I'm gonna do is gonna plump in my laptop's SSD down here. Now it should boot to the SSD. Wonder what's gonna happen. AMD has completely lost the class action lawsuit. So it looks like Windows is treating it like a like a three core six thread chip. Yeah, logical processor six. For some reason, like like out of nowhere, it would just stop booting. Like it was working perfectly fine. Everything works fine and now it won't boot until I so I did another CMOS reset. This is like the third CMOS reset. Okay, CMOS is cleared again. Now we should boot. There we go. We're booted again. Set up F1. Set up F1. And then I'm just going to change one setting. Now at this point I stop. Like, let's just go back. Everything default except for one thing. Uh... For some reason, this board defaults to IDE mode for SATA. Like, why? Save changes and reboot. And we're back at where we started. This is annoying. So I have a suspicion that the BIOS on this thing is a little bit corrupt or something. So I'm going to see if we can just update the BIOS. And it lost all of its settings again. Yep, everything back to default. Hands are getting tired. And not booting. Yay. It's not front panel. Everything in the front panel is working fine, I suppose. Yep, there we go again. Around and around and around in circles. That was long. That took a long while. Or... I don't know, it's booting now. Even though the hard... Well... <laughs> uh, I think it's AHCI. I think I didn't enable AHCI. But this time, I didn't enable AHCI. So we're gonna blue screen. So I think I'm just gonna let it blue screen several times until it gives me the option to to get into safe mode so I could run the BIOS flash thing. Okay, start up settings, restart. And then I'll just boot into safe mode. Hopefully it will boot there so I could flash my, flash the BIOS. Haha, <laughs> of course it doesn't want to unlock at all because logic. Okay, it booted up fine this time. For now, at least. I'm currently in IDE mode and it booted up. The thing about BIOS updates is if it fucks up, we brick the board. Yep, we are on version 2.8. Now let's switch to AHCI and let's see if it's gonna get borked again. Huh, would you look at that? AHCI and it just booted. No drama. So I guess it needed a BIOS update? I would assume that. So later I'm gonna try something silly to be really sure, like rock sure that this thing is perfect now. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna see, clear the CMOS again. Let's see if everything sticks. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Advanced options. Give me uh, safe mode. Okay, we're booted. Okay, we're back in SATA mode. All right, so no more drama in booting. It looks like it just needed a uh, BIOS flash. Things weren't sticking. AHCI was bugged. I have a feeling it could also be caused by bit rot. I think that's also a cause of it. Flashing a fresh BIOS seems to have fixed it. Things are working now. This computer is fixed. Perfect. 
So I was about to record like the outro conclusion part and then now it decided to um, yeah still not booting. So really the only thing I did after was unplug everything because I had to move stuff around and now we're back to square one. I think it's just the CMOS battery needed replacing. Unfortunately I don't have any spares. And we're in. You know the drill. Now I don't know at this point, like hopefully all I need is to buy a CMOS battery. The simplest things people. So now in a much more presentable attire, let's go from top to bottom on how I finally configured this system. I have set the one of the 120 mil fan as an intake blowing straight to the dinky little stock cooler, the VRM, and the North Bridge, since these things get, they run quite hot. Even with no airflow coming from the front or side or anything, it never went higher than 60 degrees. So this card is like chill. Still uh, my laptop's SSD just dangling over there. The power supply is now pulling air from underneath. More space at the back of the motherboard. So right now I have all the bundles of wires behind the drive tray because this one has more clearance it has motherboard standoffs now look at that so hopefully it's just a bios battery and if it is just a bios battery this will be the end of the video and we are back in square one i replaced the bios battery and now we're back into the old back into it not booting or bios reset or remove battery make sure contacts are clean and and then it actually booted windows and then i updated the bios but it's still but nest this time still not working properly and and so i replaced the bios battery and and it's unable to save things to the BIOS anymore for some fucking reason. Okay, now I'm desperate. Dell power supply for CPU power and 24 pin. And then the CV500 for the graphics card. Okay, at this, this point I'm starting to lose track. Okay, we're back to that. We're back to this. Changes and reboot. Should supposed to save that. And we are not posting. So it's not the power supply. Yep, I'm out.